Hello. We have three stories today, and our first knocked every other Tifu or Today I Messed Up story out of the park. This is one of my favorites recently, and it ain't no stake being thrown against a window or poop knife. Those are little blips on the radar compared to this story, which goes nuclear and launches an intercontinental missile at the hearts of hundreds on another continent. Unfortunately for the OP in this story, there is no undo button on this fallout, but luckily, Reddit bands together to clean up the mess in one of the most touching stories I've read. Story 1 This happened in February of last year, but my friends have been telling me I need to post this story online, so here goes nothing. My wife and I, both 31 years old at the time, moved into a three-unit apartment building in San Francisco. One of our neighbors is a 70-something-year-old retired veteran. We'll call him Joe. For context, Joe is a white American guy and he's also a devout Hindu priest. One day, I run into Joe in my hallway and he tells me about this charity he manages for a community in Bangladesh. I wanted to support my neighbor and the charity, so I asked Joe to send me the GoFundMe link. The next day at work, I go on the GoFundMe page and donate $150, or so I thought. Moments later, I get a text on my phone warning me of an unusually large transaction on my credit card. I'm confused and swipe to open the text message. It says I have made a payment of $15,041 to GoFundMe. Immediately, I'm sweating. How could I have donated $15,000? I spend the next 10 to 15 minutes retracing my steps. And finally, I realize my credit card starts with the numbers four and one. It seems I had accidentally started typing my credit card information while my cursor was still in the donation box. And just like that, 150 became 15,041. Yikes! I call GoFundMe support line in a panic. And when I finally connect with a human, I explain what happened. No need to worry, he tells me they will initiate a refund of the transaction which should process in three to seven business days. That's a huge relief. But then I ask the agent if the charity will be able to see the donation on the GoFundMe page until it is refunded. What do you mean? The agent asks me. What do you mean? What do I mean? Was my response. Will they be able to see the $15,041 donation? Unfortunately, yes, the agent tells me. They will be able to see it until the refund process is complete. I tell him that's a big problem as the entire GoFundMe had hardly raised that much at that point. Surely they will notice their fundraiser doubling overnight. My plan was to knock on Joe's door the following morning to give him the full story so that he could pass it along to his contacts in Bangladesh. But when I woke up the next morning, I looked at my phone and saw I had 40 plus notifications on Facebook. Someone had sent me a friend request, had liked many of my old posts, and had sent me many messages. Immediately I was concerned when I saw that the individual messaging me had a Hindu name but I never could have imagined what I saw when I opened his first message. The man had sent me a video of himself from Bangladesh, surrounded by dozens of impoverished and hungry people holding bags of food. Even worse, thanking me by name, Michael, for my generous donation. A big round of applause for Michael. At this point, I've leapt out of my bed and I'm pacing. Part of me wants to scream, part of me wants to crack up laughing. I start swiping through the man's message and it is picture after picture after picture of poor Bangladeshis thanking me for my kind donation. Literally hundreds of photos of frail, elderly, disabled, and malnourished individuals holding signs with my name. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Michael. I've uploaded a portion of the video and a few photos for you guys to see here. Okay. Let's pause and take stock of how bad this really is. I mean, Michael said he wasn't sure whether he should laugh or cry, so it can't be that bad. Can it? Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, it can be that bad. Look at these poor people. They're all thanking him. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <gasps> okay. Thank you, dear Michael, for your kind help. They all have food. Michael, you're stealing their food. Don't take back your money. Thanks, dear Michael, for... There's a child. There's children in all of these pictures. This is exponentially worse. Oh, oh, they've all lined up. Behold, behold, Michael, look what you've done. That's what this man is saying. Look at his eyes. Look into his eyes. These 
poor people. Look at all the kids. All of the kids that Michael could have fed. Needless to say, I couldn't live with myself just donating $150 after seeing how the community responded to the $15,041. I decided the least I could do was to add a zero, and so I donated $1,500 once the original donation was refunded. The charity's host was incredibly gracious and understanding, and he explained to me that $1,500 goes very far in Bangladesh for urgent food relief. I've included the charity link in the description below if anyone was interested. Ultimately, I think the whole experience was a win-win. I helped a great cause and I got a funny story out of it. Edit. Many are asking why there is no $1,500 donation listed in the fund's donation history. I donated to an old campaign link for the same charity. It is readily findable online if you feel compelled to search for it. In the comments, Xbox Play UFC said, as of this comment, the GoFundMe campaign has garnered an additional $1,209 in donations due to this post. Edit. Since I made this comment, over $60,000 has been donated. OP replied, Wow. If true, that's incredible. Thank you all for your generosity. I can't wait to hear the reaction from the charity. Easing some of the guilt I've carried for the past year, ha <laughs> Yiki D said, Well, this is wholesome. Congrats, Michael. And Yiki D is really just highlighting how Reddit's cleaned up Michael's mess. Michael sent me $20. From Michael, $5. Michael sent me $20. Michael sent me $20. The other Michael sent me $10. Michael from California messed up $5. You know, Michael's pretty lucky that Reddit came to the rescue here. I will make no excuses for his royal F up. The redeeming part of the story is the fact that these people did receive the money they so desperately needed in the end. And oddly, I guess you could say it was kind of thanks to Michael. I think the real lesson here though, is that you should always donate anonymously. It's a bad look to try get credit for a donation, but it's even worse when you F it up and add too many zeros. Our second story gets back to normal Tifu fare with fun cringe that everyone can laugh at. Well, except OP. There's no rescuing the disaster that unfolded after a group of 20 somethings pull the pin on one clueless man and hurl him at another girl when she least expected it but there's no putting the pin back in this grenade when he decides to go bang. Story two. My friends and I returned from our camping trip this morning. We were a small group of guys and girls in our early 20s, all friends. On the first camping night, one of the girls in the group wanted someone to go with her into the woods when she had to go pee. She asked me, I said, cool. The second night, she asked me again, no problem. Third night, me again. She never asked anyone else. The rest of the group noticed. Some of them were convinced her intention was to hook up with me. She's into you, stop playing dumb. Make a move next time. No, 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 that's all wrong. Who makes a move when someone's going pee? That was the feedback from the group. On night four, all of us used magic mushrooms. My friend was really tripping when nature called. Uh-oh, I don't think I like where this is going. I was equally blasted when she asked me to go with her. By the time she was done peeing, I was completely naked. I asked my friend if she wanted to get naked too. She said she wanted me to get dressed. <laughs> I got the message and managed to get dressed, but not fully. My shirt was gone. I was unable to figure out where I tossed it. My friend and I searched for my missing shirt for more or less 15 minutes before we gave up. At that moment, we realized we were kind of lost. It took us almost an hour to find our way back to the camp. When we explained to the group what happened, none of them were convinced we were gone for that long without hooking up. I referred to my bare chest and said we were really just looking for my shirt. One of the guys said my shirt was on a foldable chair and explained that I left it there because I said the letters on my shirt were melting. <laughs> on night five, my friend asked someone else to go with her. In the comments, Daddy Ruxpin said, I don't know how far away you went to pee, but I'm imagining your friend sitting at the camp watching you and the girl wander back and forth 10 feet away because you were too high to know the camp was next to you. 83 Franks added, 100% this. I remember prepping for a walk and waiting for the trip sitter to grab something from their tent. I thought we had walked halfway through the forest and turned around to see if he followed us. And we were like 20 feet from the fire and still, 
very much in the campsite with the non-trippers, staring at us while we laughed our behinds off that we hadn't actually gone anywhere. Shades McTuba, quoting, Bro, make a move, said, proceeds to get totally naked. Doodle! I meant like ask her if she wants to make out or try to hold her hand or something. VA Gentleman 5 replied, Why is this not getting more attention? My guy has zero game. Watmate said, she asked you to go with her because she thought you were safe and wouldn't try anything, not because she wanted to hook up. Cotton Fubuki added, Bingo! Okay, this has got to be the most awkward move ever. What happened to yawning and stretching into an arm over the shoulder? Or am I just stuck in a different decade here? I can't even imagine how I'd react if I went to pee and my trusted buddy, because that's what he was, got buck naked. What the actual heck? This guy went from the friend zone to the dead zone. Our third story gets back into wholesome fun when a scheduling conflict turns one mild-mannered man into a caped crusader. Ready to face the evil doers of the night, the Dark Knight strides steadfast to the office, where a surprise revelation hits him harder than a batarang. Story three. So this actually happened earlier today, and I'm still reeling from the sheer embarrassment of it all. For context, I work in a pretty average office setting. However, my colleagues and I like to spice things up with themed dress-up days every now and then. This week, we all agreed to come in dressed as our favorite superheroes. Naturally, I was super excited to participate. I've always been a huge fan of superheroes. I have this awesome Batman costume I've been itching to wear ever since I got it for Halloween last year. So, I woke up early, got dressed in my full bat regalia, and even went as far as doing the full Batman voice to complete the persona. I was ready to show up to work and save the day. As soon as I walked into the office, I could tell that something was off. People were staring at me with a mixture of confusion, amusement, and just a hint of terror. I figured they were just in awe of my Batman transformation and didn't think much of it. My manager approached me with a stifled laugh and asked, Hey, uh, Batman, did you happen to check your email this morning? I replied, still in character. Email. Batman has no need for such trivial matters. My manager then explained that there had been a last-minute email sent out last night, postponing the dress-up day to next week due to an important client meeting scheduled for today. My face went beet red as I realized I was standing in the middle of the office, dressed as Batman with zero context to justify it. To make matters worse, the important client arrived just in time to witness my embarrassment. They were surprisingly cool about it, even joking that they felt safer with Batman around. Still, I spent the rest of the day hiding in my cubicle answering calls in my best Bruce Wayne voice and praying for the sweet release of the end of the workday. Now I'm sitting at home in full Batman attire, contemplating how I'm going to show my face at the office on Monday. In the comments, Lapsang Sukjon said, You can dress up as Bruce Wayne next week. No game, no life replied, That's such a power move. Batman? Here? And I missed it? Well, what unfortunate timing. I'm sure he's more handsome in person. Snoo said, The only thing better would be if he went as Superman and then just came back with glasses on the next day. Wait, Superman was here? Dang, I called off yesterday too. Level 1 Index quoting, my manager then explained that there had been a last minute email sent out last night said, that's perfect justification. You check your work email before coming to work? No, I don't do work outside of work hours. Too busy fighting crime. This is too good. It is totally something that would happen to me. I love me a good theme and I will jump in with both feet. You know it. And if it were me and I showed up as Batgirl, you know I'd stay in character. In fact, I'd blow those clients out of the water with a pitch the likes of which they've never seen. Hmm, time to get out the tickle trunk. And that's it for today. Until next time, shine bright, Starlight. Yahoo! If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.